So if you are currently a notary, then you've probably asked yourself before, like what other things can I do with my commission or what other things can I add to my business as just ways to increase revenue and make sure that I continue to stay busy even during the slow times. So I did a little research and there's actually a decent amount out there on different things you can do with your notary commission or just different things that people have added to their business. So I wanted to make this list for you so that way you have one place to go for all this information. So I'm going to give you 15 ways to make money as a notary and to be clear some of these you will need a notary commission in order to do some of these you don't and just look good adding to your business or just make sense to add so because it is 15 things i don't want this to be super long um, so i'm just going to not spend too much time on any one thing i'm going to go ahead and breeze through it and at the end if you want me to make a dedicated video for any of the things i've talked about i'll go ahead and do that but let's go ahead and get into the list so i have to start the list with just like the softball items okay so bear with me don't worry i will get into some things that maybe you have heard of or haven't heard of so just start out let's start with the basics a ways to make money as a notary being a mobile notary or a traditional notary so if you have your commission of course you can go to your signer or they can come to you and you can charge a fee for that now your state regulates how much you can charge per notarization five dollars ten dollars fifteen dollars etc and they also regulate what you can charge on the side. So if you're a mobile notary and you are traveling to your client, you can charge, of course, the cost of the notarization and you may be able to charge additional fees like travel fees. So maybe you're only doing one notarization, but you charge $30 for the travel fee. So now that $10 notarization becomes $40. So being a mobile notary is something that's very common. Um, a lot of people who have their commission do it. And that is the first way you can make money as a notary. So the second way you can make money as a notary is doing IPIN. So IPIN stands for in-person electronic notarizations. So you, again, you can do it as a mobile notary or your client can come to you. But what that means is instead of using a paper document, you're just using some sort of digital document. So let's say your signer has a notarization, but they only have it via PDF. So you'll go out, you'll bring your little iPad and they will sign it and you will stamp it digitally. So you don't need any paper, you don't need to print anything, it's all done digitally. Not every state allows you to do IPIN, but a lot of them do. So if that's something that you're interested in, go ahead and do that. So of course, we've already talked mobile, we've talked IPIN, the next one naturally is going to be RON. So with remote online notarizations, which of course is my favorite, that's what I am, you are fully remote, not in person or in the same room as your signer. So your signer can be at their house where you're at your house they can be in a different state they can be in a different country again not every state allows you to do remote online notarizations but the way those work is you use audio visual technology so instead of you meeting in person you'll use some sort of ron platform and that platform will have a way for you to meet with that signer via video conferencing essentially and then you will be signing and notarizing that document electronically so you'll use an electronic signature You'll also use an electronic notarial seal. And the great thing about that is you're not limited to the clients in your state, right? Because you can uh, notarize documents remotely for people in any state, it just expands your clientele. And then of course you get to also be remote, which people love. So if you're a stay-at-home parent, you just hate leaving your house, you hate strangers. This is a great way for you to make money from the comfort of your own home. And they typically charge different than an in-person signing. So like I know in Washington, I think $10 for in-person notarization, but $25 for remote online notarization. So check with your state to see how you can charge for those, but definitely another way to make money. So if you've been a notary, then you know there's kind of like two buckets of notarial work, right? You're either gonna do like general notary work or a loan signings or a combination of both like most people do. Um, so we'll start off with number four way to make money as a notary is doing general notary work. So general notary work is just notarizing documents that don't have to do with real estate tr transactions, powers of attorneys, healthcare documents, things like that. It's the common documents you typically get when you're going uh, to somebody and it's not like a loan document or somebody borrowing money in order to purchase a house. That's all that is. Now, when it comes to um, general notary work, again, your state regulates how much you can charge. But with general notary work, you're going to your signer's house, you're charging them their 10, 20, 30, $40, they pay you right then and there, you're done. And the good thing about general notary work also is those transactions are typically pretty quick. Like most times people have like a one document, one seal, two document, two seals. You can crank those out like nothing. And with general notary work, you can do it in person, you can do IPIN, you can do RON. There's no limit to how you can perform general notary work as long as your state allows it. So now that we've talked general notary work, of course we have to talk 
loan signings. So you've probably heard of a loan signing agent or a notary signing agent or some combination of the sort. So a loan signing agent is just a notary that's been trained and certified to walk people through the loan document process or walk people through a set of loan documents related to real estate transactions. That's all it is. So typically when you're becoming a loan signing, and to be clear, all loan signing agents are notaries, but not all notaries are loan signing agents, if that makes sense. In order to become a loan signing agent, you have to be a notary, but just because you have your notary commission doesn't mean you're a loan signing agent, if that makes sense. So most of the time to become a loan signing agent, you'll want to take some sort of um, course and get your background checked. Now, technically, there's no law saying you have to do those things, but most companies that are going to give you those loan signings do like to see that you've been certified through some accredited certification like the National Notary Association and that you've gotten your background check. Reason being, you're walking people through some of the most important documents of their life, right? Like the biggest purchase you make is your home typically. And also you're all in people's houses. So they want to make sure you trust you. They want to make sure you know what you're doing and you're not going to mess anything up. Um, the good thing about loan signings is they pay more per transaction. So with general notary work, right, you may only make five, 10, 15, 20 dollars for that transaction. Loan signings are typically a flat, flat fee, so they can pay you, you know, $150, let's say, for that loan signing. And so you just get more bang for your buck because, well, you know more and know how to walk people through that situation. So the pay is deserved. And you can do loan signings via IPIN, you can do them via RON, you can do them via um, in person if your state allows and if that company who gave you the loan signing allows as well. So those are all like the basics, the ways you probably already know. So let's get into some ways maybe you don't know. And honestly, as I was doing my research, I learned a lot going through this. So shout out to anybody who's made a video about different ways to make money as a notary. I've learned a lot from the information that you put out there. But the number six way that you can make money as a notary is as a wedding officiant. So a notary can also perform wedding ceremonies, legally marry a couple and act as a wedding officiant. However, a notary public is not allowed to marry couples in all states. So only a few states actually recognize a marriage certificate from a notary and there's other requirements that you have to do. So in those states, notary, notaries can perform traditional aspects of the ceremony, including the marriage vows and completing related matrimonial documents, such as signing the marriage license and delivering it to the county clerk's office to get marriage certificates. If, a, if you get a notary to perform ceremony outside of those states, then the marriage certificate will not be legal unless that notary is also a licensed wedding officiant. So long story short, if you're not in those states, you can't legally marry somebody as a notary just because you're a notary. If you are a notary and you do want to marry somebody, that's fine, but you also have to be a wedding officiant in order for it to actually be legal and certified. Otherwise, you just went through this process and that marriage certificate is not actually valid. But I have seen a lot of notaries actually add wedding officiant to something that they do. And the good thing about it is let's say that maybe you don't want to be a wedding officiant, but you still want to kind of be involved within uh, wedding ceremonies. There are documents that need to get notarized. So as a notary, there's still stuff that you can do within that space. So some documents that could potentially need to get notarized are uh, notarizing life documents, witnessing sig signatures for the marriage license, uh, notarizing certified copies of the wedding license, um, and notarizing documents you need for name changes. So there are different ways to still make money as a notary within the wedding space, even if you are not legally allowed to marry somebody as a notary in your state. Okay, so the seventh way that you can make money as a notary is by being an apostille or an apostille. I heard somebody say apostille the other day, so I'm gonna just stick with that. Now, what it is, is let's say that you are transferring a document from here, a notarized document from here to another country. Now, a notarization is going to be recognized within the United States, right? Because they know that you're, they can verify your commission, they know it's legit, they understand. But if it's going to a different country, they have no idea who you are, they don't know if it's legitimate, they don't know if your commission's actually valid. So what you get in order to legitimize whoever it is that certify that document, like a notary commissioner or some, some, some other sort of public official, is you get something called an apostille. Now what it is, it looks like a little certificate and you typically get it from the secretary of state or whoever gives the notary commissions and they'll staple that certificate to um, that document that you had. Now, once it's stapled, that makes sure that when that document gets sent out to the other country, they know that that, notar that notarization is valid and that you're good to go on that document. It kind of helps legitimize it. Now, as a notary, you cannot issue apostilles. But what you can help do is 
be kind of a middleman for your client. So let's say you just not arrest their document. They're like, ah, I need an apostille. You can be like, you know what? Don't worry about it. I'll go to the secretary of state for you. I will get the document all packaged, certified, all that, and I'll bring it back to you. Or better yet, I'll send it out for you. So you can charge additional fees for that service because people don't want to go through the headache of going to the secretary of state, filling out forms, all that hotness. So you can essentially help alleviate um, that stress, that burden, those extra hurdles by going there uh, for them. And then you can charge an additional fee because it's not an editorial act. Again, you're not issuing the apostille at all. You're just helping them with the convenience. And then you can charge what you'd like for that. A lot of times people charge, you know, 75 to $150 to perform that service because you are going out of your way. So that is something that you can also do. I feel like I'm talking so fast. So if I am, I am so sorry. I will try to slow it down for the next half of this list. So the eighth way that you can make money as a notary or just stuff to add to your notary business is through fingerprinting. So if you are in the medical field, especially if you're like a traveling nurse or something, or you work with children of the elderly, then you've probably been fingerprinted. Like I used to tutor elementary school kids in college and I got fingerprinted every time, which makes sense. But it's also a service that you can provide for people. And to be clear, you do not have to be a notary in order to do fingerprinting. Like those two aren't necessarily associated with each other. But I've just found that a lot of people who are notaries do fingerprinting for whatever that reason is. Now, there's typically two types of fingerprinting. There's ink card fingerprinting, which is more of your traditional. You have the ink pad, you roll the person's finger on it, you put it on a card, and then you have live scan, which is just electronic fingerprinting. You have a little machine and you'll go ahead and electronically capture that person's fingerprints. And then they have software associated with it that will immediately send those prints over to wherever that print is being requested. Now, I know there's other sorts of like things you have to have, potential certification that you have to have in order to do these things. And of course, doing live scan requires some different uh, steps and hurdles, but it is something that you can do. And the good thing about it is even with the live scan one, you can physically print out those fingerprints on a card if somebody does need to have a card. Now, through my research, you can make about $45 per transaction when it comes to fingerprinting. And each session is only like 10 to 15 minutes. So it's a really good way to make some additional income if you're looking to do those things. And if you're doing the ink card fingerprinting, the startup cost is incredibly low, right? The ink pad is like 15 bucks. The cards are like, I don't know, 15 cents each. So it's super cheap and super um, affordable way to go ahead and start making money on the side through your business. So the number nine way that you can add on to your notary business is by doing field inspections or being a field inspector. Now, this is another thing that doesn't require any sort of notary commission. And I don't believe it requires any sort of certificate or license at all to do this. But a lot of times notaries, especially mobile notaries, will do it because it's kind of same vein, right? You're working with a third party company. You're in your car. You're going to different places. You're trying to be efficient within a coverage area, like same general kind of like, you know, feel and steps to it. Uh, but what you do as a field inspector is really what you're doing is you're examining properties and you're providing written and photographic reports to lenders, insurance companies, and other interested parties. So some of the things that you may do is uh, verify, you know, occupancy of a business or a space. Um, you may assess damage. You may be uh, verifying an insurance claim. You may be documenting um, a property in order for, um, you know, a mortgage company to assess the value of it, kind of things like that. So let's say, you know, somebody put in an insurance claim for something that happened at the house. You may go and take pictures to make sure what they say it looks like is exactly what it looks like. So they can actually verify that claim. So that kind of thing. And when you're a field inspector, you're a contractor. So typically you're signing up with multiple companies and companies will send you assignments that you can then accept or decline. So they may say, hey, I need you to go and verify the occupancy of this building or verify that this business is actually real and it'll pay you $40, $30, et cetera. And you can say, yes, I wanna do it or no, I don't want to do it. Not all field inspection assignments will be worth it. Some are, some won't. It's kind of a numbers game when it comes to doing field inspections, but it's an easy thing to start up because the things you need are typically things you already have. You need a car because you're gonna be going to places. You need uh, a camera because you need to be taking pictures of whatever that is that they need you to take pictures of. And you need internet connection because typically you're going to be sending stuff over and building these reports. So you may need some other stuff, but typically the base level stuff are stuff that you more than likely already have. So field inspections is definitely something to look into if it's something that you're interested in. The number 10 way that you can add onto your notary business is being a notary permit runner or expediter. 
Now, a permit runner, you help manage the paperwork during the permitting process for a building project. So this frequently involves things like helping drop off or pick up paperwork from city slash county offices, reviewing materials, reviewing permits to ensure they meet all submission requirements, and interacting with both the city and project staff to help advance approvals. So let's say that you're building a pool in your backyard, right? And you can't just go to building. Like you need to get city permits. You need to get uh, approved in order to do those. And there's a lot of permits that you need specific documents. You need to put them, give them at the right time. You need to make sure they say certain things, right? And it's a big process. And although people can do that on their own, the people that are involved in building it or the people that are asking for it to be built, they don't want to a lot of times, right? Like they don't want to focus on that. And so what they'll get sometimes is a permit expediter who can help manage all that and take that burden away from them. Now, the reason it's called a notary permit runner is because some of the documents that are within the permitting process need to be notarized. So who better to provide like a 360 service than the person already notarizing the document, right? So I've, from what I've read, um, you can charge anywhere between like 75 to $150 to run, notarize, and pull permits for somebody. Uh, so which is pretty good money. And I would say think of yourself more of like a project manager, right? Because it's you kind of need to make sure you're on top of it all. You're kind of managing the system. You're making sure that they have everything that they need and nothing's kind of falling through the crack to delay their project. So you're kind of like a project manager during this time. But $75 to $150 is pretty good. And there's actually a really good video on YouTube that I saw, I believe of a notary talking about permit running and them having a permit running business. So I'll link that because I think you can learn a lot from that video. So the number 11 way that you can add to your notary business or just add additional services on the side of your notary business is through being a process server. Now, if you're like me, the first thing you think about when you think of a process server is like TV shows, right? It's like that person kind of dressed in the disguise. It's like a pizza man that's walking up to your door and all of a sudden you open the box and it's like, divorce papers and like boom you've been served and they just dip out so that's what i think of when i think of a process server but really what it is is it's just somebody who helps deliver official legal or court documents such as like subpoenas and summons and complaints and other legal documents to the individuals that are involved in this court case and the thing about it which i actually didn't really which i actually didn't know is is your job oftentimes to find the individual so some people are you going to know exactly where they are at their house or their job or their whatever and some people you may have a hard time finding. So it's up to you to be able to research and look to see to find this individual. Now, of course, going up to people and serving them documents that they don't want does have some like security risk to it, but it is a legitimate thing that you can do. Now, in order to be a process server, there's some things that you'll need to get done by your state and every state varies. But from what I read, the most important thing when it comes to being a process server is knowing your state and federal laws and what you can and can't do, because there's a lot of things you can't do as a process server if you are serving people these legal documents. But process servers can make up to like $40 an hour being a process server. Now, of course, that's going to vary by state. It's going to vary by the job. It's going to vary by whoever you're working with. But there is some legitimate money in that if it is something that you're interested in or looking to do. So the number 12 thing that you can add onto your notary business is courier services. So I actually see this a lot when it comes to people who are loan signing agents or just a notary in general, especially if you're already on the road. Courier services is simple as taking something from A to B, right? Rather, it's package, documents, lost luggage, medical supplies, insurance stuff. It doesn't matter what it is. You can be a courier of literally anything. But I tend to find for notaries, when I look on like different notary websites, it's for documents and packages and things like that. So if you think about it, like let's say that you, you know, notarize a document for a client and that person then needs that document to go to their friend's house in the next city over. Like there's nothing stopping you from being able to be like, you know what? No problem. I'll take that to your friend's house for a fee, right? It's not a notarial act. So you can charge whatever it is for it. And no, you don't need a notary commission to be a courier but it's something really easy to add onto your business. You want me to take medical supplies from one place to the other? Boom, I'll do it. You need a package delivered from one place to the other? I'll do it. So being a courier, like you can make whatever niche you want within being a courier services. And if you're already on the road, you're already in your car, the car is the way that you make your money, this is something that you can definitely add on to your business. And it's nice if you're a signing agent because you can potentially help out your clients being like, hey, do you have other packages that need to go to FedEx? Because I can take those for you for these additional fees. So just know that being a courier is something where you're an independent contractor, you can decide your own fees, and you can kind of decide what that business looks like. But it's a very easy thing to then add on to what you already offer. So the number 13 way that you can make money 
as a notary is through digital court reporting. Now, as a digital court reporter, you do actually have to be a notary. So what is it? If you don't know, I didn't know. So let me go ahead and just read verbatim what it is. So like a stenographer, a digital court reporter, also known as electronic court reporter, is a notary. So responsibilities include swearing in witnesses and marking exhibits, just using a different court reporter device. So instead of traditional court reporter machine, these professionals record the proceedings using digital technology. That usually means audio, but sometimes includes video. And professionals take notes using the recordings either manually or by annotation in a software platform. And then they submit these transcripts into a cohesive document afterwards. Now, to be clear, a digital court reporter is not a transcriber. So if you think of like traditional stenographers who are like in the courtroom, they have that little keyboard, you go to school for it typically, like that's not what you are. You're not over here transcribing the entire court proceeding and need to type 200 words per minute, which I would never qualify for because I'm nowhere near, I think I'm like 80 words per minute, which is probably terrible. But that's not what you are, okay? So you are only documenting making notes of specific parts of the proceeding and a lot of times as a digital court reporter first of all you're fully remote and the software that you're going to be using to record the session record the proceeding oftentimes has some sort of ai in the background to where it's already transcribing what people are saying so you don't need to go and type every single word shorthand whatever the case may be it's doing most of the work for you but you are there to notate specific things make sure that you're swearing in the witness which is why you have to be a notary and to make note of specific parts of that case. Now, from what I've read, there's different companies that you can contract through. They are typically contractors and you can make anywhere from like 25 to $35 an hour doing it. But there is a fantastic video on YouTube about somebody talking about it. So I'm going to actually link that in the description because I wanna make sure that you get all the information you need if this is a way that you want to go. Now, also, I don't believe you have to have any sort of certification. I think it looks good, but I think technically it's not required, but there are classes and other courses you can take if this is a route that you want to go. Okay, only two more to go, first of all. If you have stuck with me for this long, pat yourself on the back. I get it, I know, the list is long, but hopefully you've seen something that you're interested in and want to explore further. But the 14th way that you can make money as a notary or to add to your notary business is through courses and mentorship. And I'm so like, I'm speaking truthfully when I say this is a very easy way to make additional money. Here's the thing. There's so many people that are getting into the business of being a notary and being a science agent. And although there is a lot more information out there via YouTube, via courses, other courses, via whatever, about this information, nothing beats one-on-one -on -one conversations, right? Because there's always going to be those nuanced questions. There's always going to be things specific to your situation that you want to talk through, always. I don't care how many videos, prep, research that you've done. I still have them all the time, and that's why I have a mentor. But people want to make sure that they have somebody that they trust, that fits their, like, you know, that they vibe with, that can answer their questions, that has this experience. So if you are a notary or signing agent, you know what you're talking about, you have experience, you can provide this value to people. There's nothing wrong with advertising that you can mentor people with for a fee. If you want to do it for free, do it for free. That's fantastic. But also don't feel bad if you do charge. Like time is money. You are taking time out of your day. It is okay to charge if that's what you want to do. And it is an easy way to make additional money. The knowledge that you have is valuable. It is okay to monetize that. So if that's something that you're looking to do, do it. Making a course, I made my first course, um, what, back in November. It's easier than you think it is, right? You don't need big production. You don't need a big camera. You don't need all of this stuff. You can make a course from your phone and put it online. And if people buy it, great. If they don't, whatever, right? You didn't spend a ton of money. You spent time, but you didn't spend a ton of money to do so. So it's something that you can add and can provide if you're looking to provide those. Okay, so the last thing that you can do to make money as a notary or add to your notary business is being a Ron facilitator. Now, this for me is my favorite thing. And I actually learned about this a few months ago um, from Amy, who owns Cyberize It. And I think this is the coolest thing and it makes a ton of sense. So let's say, let's say that somebody reaches out to you and they want a remote online notarization done. And let's say that you are either can't do it for whatever reason. It's, you know, you're not a Ron, Ron's not allowed in your state, you don't have the time, you don't want to, whatever the case may be. Well, you can essentially be a Ron facilitator, which is what I consider like, almost like a finder's fee, like a go-between, like a referral almost. So essentially what you would do is you'd be like, yeah, you know what? I can't do it, but 
my friend can do it, my other notary within my organization can do it, whatever the case may be. And what you'll do is you'll kind of have to build in a finder's fee into that in order to get the RON facilitation cost. So what it would be, it's like, okay, so you need a notarization done, that notarization is going to be $40. And so what you'll do is you'll make sure that everything's set up. You'll make sure you'll schedule the time, the date, you'll make sure that there's a notary who's qualified that you trust to do it. You'll make sure the signer knows how to get into the sign, you'll walk them through everything. And at the end of it, you'll pay the notary a portion of what they paid you. So, you know, they paid you $40 for the notarization, you take 10, you get the notary $30 or whatever the case may be. Now, of course, you're not going to be taking $20, $25 because you didn't do the notarization. You need to make sure the notary actually gets paid what they need to get paid. But all you're building in is a finder's fee. Now, there's actually ways, um, there's actually companies that have this formalized. I know there's like specific ways you can do it on Cyberize It. There's specific ways you can do it with other notary companies that have reached out to me um, via email. Like this is a thing. Like people want the business. They want their in-house notaries to get work. So they're like, if you get a notarization, you don't want it, pass it to us. And we'll give you a little cut off the side. We'll give you $5. We'll give you $10. So these are things that you can do in order to make money in Ron, even if you're not a Ron yourself, you can be a California. So somebody's like, you know, I need a remote online notarization. You're like, cool, I got you. You're not doing it because Ron's not in California, but you can still make money off of that notarization just by referring them to somebody else and feeding that other person's business. And it's a win-win. That person, that notary now has business. That signer now got their document notarized and you got a little uh, change on the side as well. So doing Ron facilitation is something that you can do. Now that is the end of my list. That is 15 things that you can do as a notary or add to your notary business. What do you think? Are Is it any of this stuff that you already do? Is it stuff that you've considered doing? Is it stuff that you've wanted to do? Like I said, this was a quick list. Hopefully it was quick once I put this video all together. But if you want a more in-depth review of any one of these things, let me know and I'll make a dedicated video for it. I'll either speak more in depth if I have more information or if not, I'll just bring somebody in um, who can talk about it, who's more of a professional, who can give you all the information you want. Heck, maybe we'll go live and we'll make it so that way you can come in and ask questions. But leave that all in the comments. Thank you so much for watching my video. I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.